Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game rated M by the ESRB. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Steven Plays Red Dead Redemption 2. Morning, Charles. Hi, Charles. Ah. Hey, how's it going? Good enough. Real fine. Yeah. Well, bye. Uh, on the last episode, took a bounty. Um, things went well, and then uh, we started process on building a, a home here, which is exciting. Um, honestly, the entire last episode had everything to do with the Skinner brothers, which are apparently going to be a problem for us, to say the uh, to say the very least. But we're going to deal with it um, as we can. We have an uncle mission uh, that's not far from here. I'm actually going to get my cores up first. And uh, then we'll go see what he wants. Uncle, are you actually working? I mean, I doubt it, but I figured I would ask. Just be polite. Those plans make any sense? Oh, sure. Seems easy enough, I think. How hard can it be? <laughs> but I'll tell you what I think. Just to be safe, I'll do the reading and planning, and you do the building. How did I know you'd try to weasel out of doing any work? Oh, now, that is... Plain unfair. It, it's inaccurate and not what's going to happen. I'm simply going to use what I've got, which is a brain. Why you use what you've got, which is less of a brain. <laughs> Let's get started. Well, first thing it says, the foundation, which involves moving those heavy wooden joists. Definitely not a job for a man with terminal lumbago unless you want to dig a six-foot deep hole for me when the work day's over. Don't tempt me. Oh, here comes Charles. Maybe he can lighten the mood a little. How'd you get on? I'll be back, but not for a while. Charles, dear boy, John needs help moving these joists. Now, come on. Get a move on. We gotta get started before the rains come. You're very annoying. He's right. We should get on with this. Charles is always down to do whatever needs to be done. I'm also really glad that they don't make us build this in some sort of minigame. Man, things are coming together. I was kind of expecting, like, there would be various missions and we would see the process of the house. Oh, no, hold on. I am going to be expected to lift and carry a board. Like, we're still in the pro- like, there's still... You know, like, things happening. We still have to use our gun and stuff, but overall, this part is so much more carefree. Like, Arthur's life was just filled with strife. And now, you know, playing as John, everything's changing, you know? Changing for the better. And soon, I'm sure we'll have Abigail back. Well, let me have a rule and a saw and I'll cut it. I'll climb it's just, I think it's just interesting because tonally, this is such a far cry. Like, you gotta think back. It was not that long ago that, like, gang members are getting mowed down and you're like, oh my god, we're losing the gang, everything's falling apart. And then we do a little time jump. And everything's okay. Everything's gonna be all right. And we've got the passage of time. Our beard is growing here. We're also building a house, which is probably telling enough. There we go. <laughs> Look at that! I mean, it has really come together. Here we go again. Sorry, I screwed that up. Come on now. There we go. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. <laughs> this episode is literally building a house. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Like in any other in any other game, this it'd be like, what is going on? But honestly, you get to know these characters in this story so well that seeing them accomplish a thing, you just get excited for them. Holy crap, look at that thing. 
It's just amazing that they're able to accomplish this. All two of them. Because I'm sure Uncle has never lifted a tool. And again, this this doesn't count as, as a cutscene because I am required to occasionally tap A. Because you gotta hammer some nails. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I really wasn't expecting this. That it was just gonna be like, once you get the stuff, you just build the house. I thought for sure they were gonna make, you know, you kept coming back over time and saw that it got a little bit further and a little bit further. But I mean, that being said, you know, I'm super happy that we're just going to be able to immediately jump into the house. And I think that's everything. <laughs> John Marston, you have a home. So do you. Oh, I know. And you, Charles, as long as you'll stay with us. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, to this happy home. Well, at least till this fool gets his woman back. <laughs> My darling Abigail, I hope you and Jack are doing well. I remain a fool, and I'm sure I shall die a fool. But I'm trying very hard to be something like the man you deserve. I have done something very silly in an effort to impress you, and that is I've purchased a home. The land you read about in the newspaper up at Beecher's Hope is now ours, and we are going to try our hand at ranching. Mr. Geddes kindly helped me buy the land. I met Uncle while I was coming out of the bank, and while I know your feelings about him, he has been enormously helpful in his own fashion. Charles Smith has also appeared and is unsurprisingly a pillar of strength. Together, we've built you a home. I hope soon to show it to you. I miss you and the boy more than I can express. Please, come back to me. Yours always, John. That was very heartfelt. Very heartfelt, very nice. You have to also imagine and remember that it's been months. Months and months and months. It's beautiful, John. It's absolutely beautiful. Uncle, I thought you was... Where the hell? Huh. You should complete a new Jerusalem. Okay, it would be cruel to not walk in here and see this, right? Like, that would be cruel to everyone watching. And it'd certainly be cruel to me. So we come in, we got a room on the right here. And again, you know, things aren't going to be, like, ideal. I'll go into first person so we can see it a little bit better. You know, Charles, uh... Charles and Uncle are still staying with us. So things might be a little messy. Got another room across the hall that we can't go into. Locked myself out of that one. Will it let me go into some of the other rooms? It will. We've been doing some cooking, it looks like. That goes up to the attic, which I'll go check out in a moment. A lot of sunlight coming in here. And I mean, it's still, uh... I'm walking over the tools. It's still a work in progress, obviously, but man! 
I mean, it's like they said, we have a home. And of course, anyone that's played, you know, Red Dead Redemption 1, this may, <laughs> this may look familiar, or it may look weird, actually, to see it unfinished like this. All right, let me, uh, let me see if it'll let me go up here. And the answer is yes. Really cool, man. Really, really cool. I mean, we've been we've been working hard, and I still owe uh, I still owe a debt to the bank, but you know it is what it is. I'm gonna work it off the best I can. As I destroy everything in my house by walking over it. Charles, how you doing? Maybe he knows where Uncle is. You see anything we should be worried about? Skinners. No. Seems quiet. Good. Maybe that was all of them. I'll see you around. Alright. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're, uh... I guess we really owe it to ourselves to probably go find... Better not have forgotten me, boy. <laughs> we should probably go find Uncle. Uh, we can take a look at their map to see what else is available to us. Uncle's not far away. Are there new bounties? No, not yet. Doesn't look like there's anything else pressing to check out on the map. All right, Uncle. I guess we'll come find out what's going on. And fortunately, you're not too far away. Now, if you were too far away, then I couldn't couldn't come find out. It'd be too difficult. Right, let's see. Where are you? Sleep Just under a tree. One time, I hope to find you working. Just once. Do you believe in reincarnation, John Marston? No. Well, I hope and pray to whatever is out there that I get to come back as a youngin. So that when you're old and facing death, I can be some two penny slave driver that comes along and hastens your journey into the grave. This is a fatal condition I got. And I'll give you another fatal condition. We don't get on with things around here, and we'll all starve. Get on with what? Farming, ranching, planting something. The only thing that this land's good for is grazing. Grazing? Yeah, so so cows, sheep, goats. Now, goats is easy, but they taste awful. I don't like goats. And cows, I've seen enough cows. Yeah, sheep then. But any livestock, you're gonna need a barn. Barn will take three of us six months to build. Oh, you don't build a barn, dumbass. What do you think this is, 1785? You buy one pre-cut just like the house. This is the industrial age. The lumber fillers all have them. That guy makes me hate the modern world. Oh, come on. I'll deal with them. Well, Uncle proven his, his worth. It's beautiful from up here on the ridge too. In the black water. Let's go. All right, Uncle, I'm with you. Now this fella probably saw you. Thought here's some corn husk idiot. Some country rube doesn't know a pre-cut home from an outhouse, and I'm gonna rob him blind. <laughs> Uh, I gotta respect him for it. Cause if I saw you walk into my lumber yard, I'd think exactly the same thing. <sighs> Thinking about it? Uh, I might actually do this on my own. Oh, I can't let you do that, John. Let you get robbed again? <laughs> oh, no. You need someone with some sense to negotiate. And some charm wouldn't hurt neither. Uh, and that's you, is it? With your famous way with people? <laughs> You're in enough debt as it is. I got to help you all I can. It's my debt. I'll handle it. Yeah, but if they foreclose on the debt, I'll lose my home. And I do so like it there. You like it too much. You're far too comfortable. Ah, you ain't even got furniture. I mean, but we will someday. We just have to buy it or build it. <laughs> There will come a day where we have furniture. We're already back into Blackwater. So we'll go with Uncle and see if we can get this house stuff settled. 
I've already been a huge fan of everything this episode. It's very, uh, it's very chill. It's like, hey, just build a house. Can't wait till we uh, do the shopping for furniture side mission. Whoa. And I'll, at least this now I know him. where to enter the uh, property. Just be civil. Everything will be fine. And how are we? How's little Emily? Emily? Oh, I'm sorry, I've, uh, um, how are you? Uh... We need a barn. A barn? Of course you do. All them potatoes. We're gonna uh, farm livestock. What's wrong with you? How many Scarface loons you got coming in here buying pre-cut uh, homes? Here, uh, what you think? Uh, have a look. <laughs> Maybe that one. Yeah, that one. We're an excellent choice. We have a couple already cut and in stock. I'll have it sent to you in Blackwater. I'm down at Beecher's Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, this is my wife, Jerry. You see, she's uh, but it, it's great seeing you again, Al. Yeah, it's, and it's you, been sir. A pleasure as always. Great pleasure. Love your work. Of course. How are we gonna pay for this? <laughs> Same way we pay for everything. I just wish I could help you, sir. You've been a good customer and. I like you, and David Geddes likes you. Now, I, I, but this man is very annoying. Can you just give me a few days? Of course. I really enjoy begging and watching you make a fool of yourself. Well, I... John! Hey! Is that Sadie Adler? <laughs> hey. John, how are you? Well, hello, Uncle. Nice to see you. And you too. Oh, shut up, you old creep. <laughs> Listen, Sadie, I... You got any work? Kind of desperate. Work? Hmm. How desperate? I need money. A bunch of money. My debt's climbing and I... You up for a fight? Is it legal? <whistles> well, it's very legal, but it's also pretty dangerous. With you, it'll be fine, but I wouldn't do it on my own. I ain't got much choice. All right, then. Come on. <whistles> Look after him, Sadie. He's a delicate flower underneath. That's me. Delicate Double flower, Marston. There's money coming in. And get a crew to help with that barn. I have it on good authority we can find this bounty at Painted Sky. I know the place. Okay, I'll follow you. Huh, all right. You know I've right. been doing some bounty hunting of my own since I last saw you? I ain't gonna make a habit of it. Good morning, sir. That's cool. A little piece of unique dialogue because I chose to do a bounty. All right. The painted sky tip is pretty fresh, but I don't know how long it'll stay that way. An encyclopedia salesman was up there on the property. Couldn't find the rancher, but saw a Mexican looking feller hanging around. Now, Ramon Cortez is around those parts, split up from his gang and stuck in West Elizabeth. It's got to be him, holed up, waiting on some out. And we're going to get to him first. Sounds good to me. I mean, anything that's going to net us some uh, some cash. So who is this bounty? Ramon Cortez. He's with the Del Lobo gang. Del Lobos? Yeah. You head back down to where we was, New Austin, you're bound to run into them. Oh, I ran into them. Mostly Mexicans. Some of them. But some is Californios. And some are regular Americans, too. They're a misfit bunch. Just like we were. And they're friendly. Real friendly. Oh, yeah. Ugh, it's a bad situation down there. Burnings, killings, you name it. I know something of that. And not much law except the sheriff of Tumbleweed. He's making a hell of a go of it, but there ain't much there to hold back the chaos. It's real wild country. Yeah, I met him. Don't you get around. You know, I had some trouble of my own. That gang you was talking about, was they the Skinner brothers? That's them. They ain't nice. Nice weren't what I heard about them. Got hold of this feller I'd hired. Ah, oh, he didn't die well. Mm, I'm sorry, John. We fought back. We was too slow was all. I wish we'd done better for him. I'm sure you did the best you could. I've heard, well, oh, the kinds of things they do to men. Unspeakable things. I hope that's the last you see of them. Me too. But if not, I mean to be ready. That is wise. 
You want to hear something? I built my ranch house. Good for you. Did you make it out of straw bales? No. <laughs> it's one of them pre-cut ones. Me and Charles put it up, and Uncle watched and barked the odd order at us. It's solid, though. Real good and sturdy. Woo! John Marsh has got his own house. You should come see it. It's good country, Sadie, despite all that. I try not to fraternize too much with employees. You know, it sends the wrong message. Oh, that's what I am now. An employee. Mm-hmm. That's what the bank says. Oh, well then I guess our fraternizing days are done. Now, be a good boy and get this bounty for me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Again, Sadie is always a ton of fun. Let's ride. This is painted sky up here. All right, we made Looks it. Quiet. Ramon Cortez, you better be here. I'm always worried now about hitching my horse because I'm worried that Buell won't be able to catch me. the main house. All right, let's uh, let's grab a gun. I'm I've been running low on um, express bullets, so I'll just take uh, high velocity. That's fine. And uh, a shotgun, because I'm feeling fancy. And I'm ready to cause... <laughs> I'm ready to cause pain, is is what I'm what I'm trying to do. With slug. You get him. Now, I probably don't want to, like, kill him. We try to, like, capture folks. So maybe not the shotgun initially. I just... I can't help myself, really. Got the lock breaker. Ramon Cortez! We've come for you! Come, come! Oh, God! Oh, I found Don't him. Fight it. Just drift away. Sadie? You around? Okay, we're gonna do it this way, huh? I'm assuming the game wants me to, like, take him down and not just, like, lasso him right him? here. I think so. He just tried to kill me. That's about right. Yeah, that's him. Come on. Let's get him to the sheriff. No on, way. No way it's this easy. Ride. We're going to... Also, my hat. Let me magically... Get it back. Roads. Roads. It's different there now. Ah! Uh, uh, that hurt. You want money? Gold? My men are meeting me at Dewberry Creek. Take me there. I'll pay you good. Better than any bounty. Oh, shut up. Gonna drown if we keep at that level. And away we rode. This this screen lets you know that there is a passage of time. And then we arrived in Rhodes, where the pop-in was bad. Real, real bad. This place still gives me the creeps. Hit your horse up here. Now, isn't Easy. this isn't this where we Bring saw uh, Pearson? Front for me, will you? I'll get them ready for you. Blackwater, the new boom town. Read it here. Come here, buddy. I got gotcha. you. There you go. Come on. I'll give you a hundred dollars to kill that bitch. Two hundred. Mr. Sheriff. Mr. Sheriff, we got Ramon Cortez. Cortez? Sure did. Well done, Hal. Found him hiding in a pile of shit. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> How you doing, Ramon? Oh, just fine, mister. 
Hey, how much you want? How much any of you want? I'll give $2,000 in gold to whichever one of you sets me free. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, Ramon. You've been a real bad boy. Me and my boys are gonna ride you into San Denis and watch them hang you. <laughs> okay, okay, if you think so, mister. <laughs> oh, I know so, Ramon. Take a seat. Help me guard them till my boys arrive and we can get them out of here. I knew there was more to this. Uh, spent years cleaning up this town. Last thing I need is fools like this thinking they can take us back to the bad old days. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> Too quiet in here, man. Too quiet. I don't like that. If Ramon knows that he was going to be taken to Rhodes, he's just waiting. There they are. I mean, you knew what was going to happen. Oh, Sheriff Thomas, Sheriff Thomas. We want our friend back. You have about 10 seconds, Sheriff Thomas, before we kill all of you fools. One. Don't be a dumb bastard. Two. This is a good town now. Three. Let him have it, boys. The only thing I'm thinking about letting you have is a stick of dynamite. Yeah. What do you think about that? That was way too close man. to me. I moved the stick right before, like right before I, I, I threw it, because I thought I'd already thrown it, and then I ended up dropping it in, in, in my face, basically. Let's try that again. I assume the checkpoint is right where we were. Um, God, I need to do better about throwing that dynamite, man, because uh, if you don't, you'll die. Funny thing about dynamite is that it explodes. Again... This could work really well, it's just a matter of doing it correct. See that? That did good. That was a good one. Is he still alive? Say, do you get him? Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna shoot you here. Uh, I'm not gonna shoot the horse. Yeah, it's because I threw a stick of dynamite. They were like, holy crap. They would throw dynamite just in, in the town? And I was like, yeah, I'm John Marston and I'm crazy. I learned it from my friend, Arthur. I don't like to let any of them live. I think that's a little too easy. What was it? Come on. Oh, it was all a distraction. The jail. The jail. They blew my jail apart. He's gone. He's gone. Uh, well, we brought him in. Now pay us what's owed. He ain't here now, madam. I don't get paid unless he makes it to San Denis. You want to get shot today as well as robbed, mister? Are you threatening me? Why would we bother threatening you? Get him back and I'll get your money. And another $50 besides. $100. 75 I can't go higher. Done. Let's go, Jim Milton. Don't say it sarcastically, they'll know. Come on. Who could have done this? Who, who could have done, I'm just ch channeling my inner Bethesda guard. Oblivion or Skyrim. It doesn't matter. It continues to happen. It'll happen in Elder Scrolls 6, too. Uh, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna do a heck of a cliffhanger here and just stop it right here. Thank you for watching. Next episode, I will continue riding with Sadie. We gotta go get Ramon back. And they need to probably repair this jail. <laughs>